Hey guys, John here. Today's patch is called Chip Doom. Now, this is a play of words from Chip Tune. Either people love it or people hate it, but I freaking love Chip Tune for some weird reason. So I kind of wanted to make a Chip Tune, Chip Doom patch, but have a little bit more pizzazz in it. So here we go. Okay, I think you get the idea there. So for this one, there's kind of a lot going on here. So let's turn off the effects. Let's go to the synth page. We're using the utility engine. Let's turn that off. We're using engine number two analog. Let's turn that off. And we're using engine number one. So let's keep this one on. So this one is basically just doing this. So how is it making this here? So we're gonna be seeing the basic waveforms for this wavetable here. And we're going to be changing the waveform just a little bit. That's why we kind of have this weird kind of Batman thing going on. So we're going to change this change of the skew to 0.556. The type is going to be the skew right over here. And the skew mod 0.004, small little amount there. Next up for the wave folding, we have 0.148 for the fold mod. And we're not changing any of this over here. Then we're going to be using some frequency slash ring modulation in this category. And it's going to be 0 0.460. The type is going to be linear. And we have some unison, two voices over here, the detune at 3%, stereo 100%. Now the interesting spot is gonna be this, uh, this uh, pitch modulation. So we look at the course here and we see that this is done from function number two. So before we look at the modulation, we should look at the notes that they are modulating. So we click on this little pencil over here and it's gonna be just this blue one over here. So if you count all the way here from the left, which is gonna be a root, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's gonna be seven semitones, so a perfect fifth. So let's take a look at this function number two, and this is a small amount here because we don't want too wide, too many notes to work with here. So it's gonna be 0.18, so that's function number two. So let's take a look at that over here. Nothing too crazy, it's just a square wave starting at zero and then halfway through it goes to positive, so one, so zero, one, so on, so forth. Now the rate is gonna be one over four, it's gonna be on unipolar LFO over here, and it's gonna be this middle one over here called loop mode, re-triggered by the poly keyboard. And this one's getting sent to filter number one. Now for the envelopes, this is gonna be attack one millisecond, decay 300, sustain one, release 318 milliseconds, decay, decay curve, negative four, attack curve zero. Moving on to engine number two, we have this. Which kind of gives us that chip tune kind of thing as well, and it kind of works in conjunction with both of these. So we have two different modulations happening here. So engine number two, this same thing is going to be happening, but this is going to be down one octave or 12 semitones changed or modulated by function number three, which we're going to get there in just a second. So the sound generation part is going to be a saw wave downwards. That's going to be all the way in the mix at zero. And then for oscillator number two, we're going to have a square wave pulse wave, and it's going to be the width of 0.779. And the volume is going to be negative 6.87. And then the third oscillator is going to be up one octave. I forgot to mention the second one's down one octave, the third one's up one octave. So we're covering kind of a lot of a territory, you know, so default, well, I guess we should start here. Negative 12 for the course, no change for the first one, down 12 for the second, and then up 12 for the third. And the third is also gonna be a square or pulse wave, and the width is gonna be 0.739, volume at negative 10.5. Now for this one over here, this uh, modulation is function number three. So if you take a look at function number three, we can see it's the same thing as number two, right? It's the same same shape as we, uh, whoops, I'm on the wrong window here. It's the same shape for number two and for number three, right? So there's no change. The only difference is down here at the rate. So number two, which is controlling the first engine is gonna be at one over four, but number three is gonna be at one over 16. So same shape, same type of modulation and same type of notes that we have been selected, but we're just changing the rate of that is this one's really fast modulating and this one's really slow then together 
very helpful. So stuff like this, in case you didn't know, if you're working with functions, this window over here, this little square behind a square, if we click that, we can copy a function to another function spot. So if you have a really cool shape, I mean, this one's very easy and basic. It's a square, right? But if you have some really cool intricate shapes and you want that same shape at a different speed, instead of redrawing it, you can just click this button and copy it to another function. So in case you didn't know that, it's a super, super useful uh, function, I suppose, to uh, make your life a little bit easier. And then Unison uh, 2, I think I said this already, 2, Detune, 3%, Stereo 100. So moving on from there, we have the Utility Engine. Let's turn this one on here. So this one is a little pizzazzy. So, oh, let's turn on off engine number one. So we have a little rhythmic kind of percussion thing going on here. So we're gonna be using the first noise is gonna be Electro Firefly found in hardware. One, two, three, fourth one down, the Electro Firefly. The second noise is gonna be crowd and that's gonna be natural and it's gonna be the fourth one down. And the last one is going to be a basically a sub oscillator, negative 12 or one uh, octave down and it's gonna be output for direct out. Now this one doesn't necessarily have a modulator down in the macro, so if you don't want to have it, you can either turn it off here, or you can just turn down the volume here. Depends on what you want. So this modulation, so let's talk about these here. So the first one's getting modulated by function number one. Now, if we turn these off right over here, we just have this. It's kind of like a rhythmic kind of hi-hat kind of thing going on. So we're basically just modulating the volume on and off, which is going to be at 0.92, so quite a healthy amount here, right? So if we look at function number one right over here, we have this shape here. So this was on the sawtooth double and then it kind of just go and make some tension, some releases and kind of just mod or I guess change it, modify it to whatever you'd like to. And this is moving at a rate of one over one, which is also on another macro and we're going to talk about this in just a second here. For the next one is going to be noise two, this crowd here, and this is going to be the LFO one, which is just a triangle wave over here. The rates one over four triggered by our poly keyboard, the waveform triangle, but I did change the phase. So it kind of starts going down and then up. Nothing really too crazy there. So now over here, this perk rhythm, right? So we can always change the speed of that. depending on how fast you want it. And if we look over here, this is gonna be number three. We can see this the LFO rate, which is over here. And then we have the function one rate, which is over here. So we're basically modulating the function speed and the LFO speed to create a different rhythm or a faster or slower rhythm. Depending on how you want to use that patch. So let's turn all these back on here. And without effects, we have this. So it kind of depends on what you feel. These macros are kind of basic here for this patch. We have our cutoff and then a resonance. Now for these filters here, this is gonna be in split mode. If we click this button here, we select split, which means that this filter output is going to FX bank A. And then for the second, Filter number two is going to be going to FX bank B, which we can see from this diagram here is exactly what's happening. So let's go over to the effects. And before we do go into the effects, we should know that engine number one is going to filter one, which is FX A. Engine two is going to F filter one, which is also FX A. Utility engine is going to two, two, and yeah, which is going to FX bank B. So these rhythmic type of things are only going to be processed through bank B and the other stuff is FX A. So, Let's get into the effects here. So let's turn off B and let's focus on just FX A. So the first thing that it hits is going to be a multiband. So by default, it comes out like this. Then we get a multiband. So now this one, as I always say, it's kind of shaping your sounds. I kind of compressed a little bit more of the low end here, brought up some of the mids, and then pretty close to where the mids are is where the highs are, but just tucked down just a little bit here because the highs can get a little out of control for this patch. Next up, we hit a delay here. 
Now this one is going to be a dotted eighth note right over here. The fine is zero, feedback 0.352, stereo spread 0 0.040, high pass 20, low pass 1614 hertz. The dry wet's modulated by macro number four, which is labeled FX, at, a, at an amount of 0 0.20 or 20%. Next up, we hit shimmer. Now, the pitch shift is going to be one octave or 12 semitones up, feedback 0 0.500, size 50%, modulation one, high pass 200, low pass 7K, ducking zero, stereo width 0 0.750. And the dry wet amount is going to be modulated at 0.22 or 22% when the FX macro is at full value. Next up, we have FXB. And remember that this is independent processing. So our rhythmic stuff is going to be processed here. So the first thing that this rhythmic stuff is going to hit is going to be the compressor. So what we can do to make it a little bit easier to kind of listen to. So this is going to be the stuff that we're processing here. So we hit it with a compressor here, and at most it's getting about negative 10, which is quite a healthy amount. Our threshold is independent, or depending on our input gain, but here it's negative 13 dB, ratio 3.86 over 1. The output is boosted by 1.53, makeup is on, attack 2 milliseconds, and release 50 milliseconds, and dry wet's completely to the right. Next up, we have our delay. Which is quite nice, because it kind of fills up the stereo field. So if we turn this off and then turn it back on. Pretty cool. So this is gonna be one over four. The fine is gonna be zero, feedback 0.352, stereo spread 0 0.040, high pass 20, low pass 20K, didn't really need to mess with that. The dry wet is going to be at 0 0.20 or 20% when the FX knob is fully engaged. Last but not least, we have super unison. Which makes it a little bit thicker, a little bit fatter, you know what I'm saying? Fatten that boy up. So we're gonna have voices five, the detune at 94%, rate one K or one one hertz. Oh, one hertz, <laughs> one hertz, one hertz. Stereo width, one high pass is gonna be 10.7, and then the low pass 20k. The dry wet is going to be at 0 0.50 when the uh, effects knob macro number four is at full value. So with all that being said, let's turn on our engine number two and engine number one, and let's see what that sounds like. So that was Chip Doom. Hopefully you learned something. If you'd like to have this patch for free, there's a link in the video description below and it can be yours. So thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and we'll see you in the next video. Oh, it always reminds me of cracking software back in the day.